Hello guys, so we are in Logic and we're having a look at the Hoffer System 2 plugin. First things first, what is it? It is essentially a suite of plugins similar to the type of plugins you're going to find in any DAW. What's special about it is that you can lay them out in any particular order and configuration that you desire unlike in most DAWs. Yeah, what, what does this really mean? You know, I can have a channel strip in Logic, for example, and I can load up my EQ compressor and I can swap them in order and things like that. That's all well and good. This takes it to a whole new level. So I've just thrown this together here just to give an example of some of the complex things you can do that wouldn't exist otherwise. Um, like the setup I've built here would probably never exist in another plugin that I'm aware of. So what I've got here is just a loop from the Logic library. It is just this little two-step loop. What's it called? Two-step behind. That, that's literally it. If we turn off the plugin, this is the drum loop. Cool, nothing special, just a little two-step loop. And if we re-engage it, this is what we've got going on. It might not be equally evident straight away what's going on, and there's some like weird phasing effects and things going on, but I just wanted to show you what's possible in here. So if we look at these first two modules here on the left, they are two compressors. However, they've been put in a multiband holder. So the top compressor is compressing one part of the frequency spectrum, the bottom one's compressing another part, and then we can slide the two here and we've got our crossover point here that we can choose and it's a 12 dB per octave slope or we can change it to 6 or 24 as you like. So if we were to disable this section yeah so we see how that's compressing in different parts of the spectrum there. That then roots into this bigger block here. And as you can see at the top here, it's labeled mid side. So let's bring that back in. And I've now got another two compressors and they're working in mid side. This top compressor here, that's only compressing the mid section. So we could solo that. So we can swap here between the mid and side compression. You see they're still flashing to get rid of that. We just uh, unsolo the whole top section here and it'll put everything back in. So this top part here, that's just compressing the mids and it's just compressing the mids after it's come through this multiband, which is compressing high and low frequency. And then the sides are being compressed separately. And then the sides and only the sides, so they're being multiband compressed, then mid side, and then just the sides are being EQ'd as well. And I've got an EQ filter on there, just on the side. And the EQ filter here that we're actually using, this is the top end of it. We had a, originally a crossover going on um, because we've done a multiband EQ as well, just because we could. Um, and we've just rolled that off here, just taking the bottom part of the sound out. So we can take the sides away just like that bring just a bit of them in. And that was just to really show you what it can do. Now we're going to go through how to set it up. So I'm just going to destroy all of this. Oh, by the way, something really nice to show you. If I bring in this compressor here, um, I really zoomed these in to make them better and easier to edit for you guys when you're viewing it. If we click on the menu over here on the 
right hand side we have module scale let's put that up to one three five they would normally be showing like this and on this display well that's just no good for you guys so we zoomed into like the one three five oh, we'll go 140 even and it lets me just edit it a bit better for you if you're working on a 5k display like me or your screen's a little bit further away you might want to zoom them in you can completely do it it's totally there for you so let's destroy that one again these are our different modules We've got reverb compressors like delay eq lots of things that you would expect to find and then we've got these hashtag modules down here as well now they are relatively self-explanatory dual mono would let you have an independent plugin on left and right um, mid side is going to split your mid side frequencies multi-band we've just looked at parallel means we're going to do both of those processes together and then sum it out um, sub chain relatively self-explanatory and then feedback means it's going to feed back into itself so let's just have a look at how we would set something up and how that would generally work let's for example let's do a compressor and a distortion in parallel so we would grab the little hashtag parallel box that's just going to give us this box which says module here because it needs something to work inside it and we can use any of these we could put two reverbs in there if you really wanted to do it so what we're going to do we're going to take distortion we're going to pop that in the top one and we'll take the compressor and put that in the other one. There's two types of compressor. We've got a compressor channel and compressor sum. Um, sum obviously being like a bus compressor, we'll just grab the channel one for the minute. So now it's going to process these two things in parallel and sum it back out. So let's hear how our loop sounds. In absolutely slammed. All right, so that's compressed and distorting, and it's coming out pretty damn hot. Um, you know, what we could do is reduce our output, but hey, let's use and abuse this system, and we'll now have this parallel process going into a summon compressor. So you see when we drag this out, we get this orange bar here. That means that this is going to be in the chain afterwards, and it links together, and we get a little signal flow arrow here just indicating what's going on there. So this is now going to flow into the summon compressor. That's very cool. Maybe we want to get really creative now and we are going to just put reverb on the top end of this particular loop. So we would take the hashtag multiband and we'd put that after this. And we will stick a reverb in, I believe it actually works that the top one's the high frequency. Maybe we want that to be a bit harsher, we'll do a 24 dB slope. And in the bottom section, why not let parametric EQ that as well? And we are going to have a filter. Notice on the EQ, if we click on that, we can see what's going on here a lot more.
Let's make that slope harsher as well. Now that's all well and good. We've created this ridiculous plugin chain and split everything apart and done it all on one channel in one plugin. What about if we want to automate it and start making you know even more complex edits and really getting in deep with this? Well, then we've got all of these parameters that we would have to look at for automation. Not necessarily a problem. What we can do is right click on something like frequency and we can add it as an automatable parameter. Now that it's an automatable parameter, if we were to do something like put this in touch mode and record an edit, and let's get that back into read, it's going to play back. There's only so much I can do in a few minute video. This plugin is incredibly, incredibly deep. Um, there's not very much out there currently in English. It's a German company. These guys have done loads of tutorials if you guys speak German. However, if not, um, there's very little English video content at the minute. So if you've got any questions or you're struggling with anything, give me a shout and I'll try and respond to you uh, either in a comment or with another video because I'm loving this, but it has been quite hard to get your head around of any of the concepts. Um, as, like the manual is also very, very short. So if you do need a hand, give me a shout. There's a demo on their website. Go grab it, have some fun brilliant modular idea sounds great you can do crazy things it's almost almost like imagination is the limit i will catch you on the next video guys thank you very much for watching and subscribing